Welcome to Hitchhikers TV. Let's continue to learn about Earth and space as we explore the possible causes of plate movement. This video presentation would enable grade 10 students to describe the possible causes of plate movement as one of the most essential learning competency for grade 10 science week 7 of the first quarter lesson. What causes the plate movement? Number 1. Thermal convection number 2. Ridge push number 3. Slab pull. The force that causes most of the plate movement is thermal convection, where heat from the Earth's interior causes currents of hot rising magma and cooler sinking magma to flow, moving the plates of the crust along with them. In ridge push and slab pull, gravity is acting on the plate to cause the movement. What is thermal convection? Thermal convection involves heat transfer in a convective manner. Convection involves transfer of any form of energy by the modes of transfer from one place to another, cases which involve movement, this mainly happens in boilers, where the water nearby the furnace gets heated while the water that remains at the top won't receive that much heat. Thus they get heated when there is a convective heat transfer between the top and the bottom layers of walls in the mantle are much slower than those in boiling water. The rock creeps only a few centimeters a year. The tectonic plates in the lithosphere are carried on the asthenosphere like long, heavy couch moved on huge rollers. Over millions of years, convection currents carry the plates thousands of kilometers. Convection is the transfer of heat due to the bulk movement of molecules within fluids, including molten rock. Convection includes submechanisms of advection and diffusion. Convection cannot take place in most solids because neither bulk current flows nor significant diffusion of matter can take place. What is ridge push and slab pull? Scientists suspect that two other motions slab pull and ridge push help move these huge plates. Ridge push occurs when material from a mid-ocean ridge slides downhill from the ridge. The material pushes the rest of the plate. Ridge push the lithosphere thickens with distance, and time, away from the mid-ocean ridge. This is because it cools as it moves away from the ridge and the boundary between the solid lithosphere and slightly molten asthenosphere becomes deeper, the boundary between the lithosphere and asthenosphere is essentially a temperature boundary. The result of this thickening with distance from the ridge is that the lithosphere slash asthenosphere boundary slopes away from the ridge. The weight of the lithosphere on this sloping surface produces a downslope force. And since the asthenosphere is weak, the weight of the lithosphere near the ridge sliding down the slippery slope of the asthenosphere pushes the older part of the plate in front of it. Note that as the lithosphere slides down away from the ridge, tensional forces and normal fall earthquakes occur at the ridge axis where two plates are sliding pulling, apart. Slab pull occurs where gravity pulls the edge of a cool, dense plate into the asthenosphere, because plates are rigid, the entire plate is dragged along. Slab pull as lithospheric plates move away from midocene ridges they cool and become denser. They eventually become more dense than the underlying hot mantle. After subducted, cool, dense lithosphere sinks into the mantle under its own weight. This helps to pull the rest of the plate down with it. Slab pull the force, caused by the sinking of the cold, dense lithosphere into the asthenosphere at a destructive margin, which is hypothesized to be one of the two major driving forces for the movement of plates, the other is ridge pull. Thermal convection is inferred to exist on a large scale in at least two regions in the Earth. The liquid outer core and the upper mantle that behaves as a solid for seismic wave propagation and as a very viscous fluid for long-duration geologic processes including convection. The heat that causes convection within the Earth comes from two sources, original heat from accretion and heat released during radioactive decay of unstable isotopes. Although the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, 
some heat remains from the accretionary process during its formation because fragments of Earth materials were heated to very high temperatures by impact during formation of the planet, and Earth materials have relatively low thermal conductivity so that significant heat has been retained from the early stages of Earth history. A more important source of heat, however, is the natural, spontaneous, radioactive decay of unstable isotopes of elements that are distributed throughout the Earth, particularly in the crust and mantle. These radioactive elements include uranium, thorium, and rubidium. These sources of heat cause the Earth's temperature to increase with depth to a temperature of about 5,000 degrees Celsius in the inner core. Geologists combined their knowledge of Earth's plates, the seafloor, and the asthenosphere to develop the, the theory states that Earth's lithosphere is made up of huge plates that move over the surface of the Earth. As scientists studied the plates, they realized that one plate could not shift without affecting the others nearby. They found that plates can move apart, push together, or scrape past each other. The arrows on the map above show each type of plate motion. Plate movements cause great changes in Earth's crust. Most major earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain ranges appear where tectonic plates meet. Causes of plate movement Tectonic plates rest on the asthenosphere, a layer of soft, hot rock. Rock in this layer and in the mantle just below it moves by convection is energy transfer by the movement of a material. You have seen convection if you have ever boiled a pot of water. The water at the bottom of the pot heats up, becomes less dense, and rises. At the surface, it cools, becomes denser, and sinks, only to be heated and rise again. The rock in the asthenosphere acts in a similar way. The hot, soft rock rises, cools, and sinks, then is heated and rises again. If this sinking and rising motion continues, it is called a motion that transfers heat energy in a and asthenosphere. Earth's crust and the very top of the mantle together form the lithosphere. The Greek prefix litho means stone or rock. This layer is the most rigid of all the layers. The lithosphere sits on top of the asthenosphere, a layer of hotter, softer rock in the upper mantle. The Greek word asthenes means weak. This layer is not actually weak, but it is soft enough to flow slowly like hot tar. You can imagine the lithosphere as solid pieces of pieces of pavement resting on hot tar. The lithosphere is made up of many plates. As scientists studied Earth's surface, they discovered that the lithosphere does not form a continuous shell around Earth. Instead, they found that the lithosphere is broken into many large and small slabs of rock called Tetiaehene. Scientists do not know exactly how or when in Earth's history these giant plates formed. Tectonic plates fit together like a jigsaw puzzle that makes up the surface of Earth. You could compare the lithosphere to the cracked shell of a hard-boiled egg. The shell may be broken into many pieces, but it still forms a crust around the egg itself. Most large tectonic plates include both continental crust and oceanic crust. Most of the thicker continental crust rises above the ocean. The rest of the plate is thin oceanic crust, or seafloor, and is underwater. The next time you look at the continents on a world map, remember you are seeing only the part of Earth's crust that rises above the ocean joined together and split apart. The idea that Earth's surface might be moving is not new. As far back as the 1500s, when mapmakers started including North and South America in their world maps, they noticed something curious. The western coast of Africa and the eastern coast of South America seemed to fit together like pieces in a puzzle. Were these continents joined at one time? In the late 1800s, German scientist Alfred Wegener Wegener, began studying this question. In 1912, he proposed a hypothesis. According to Wegener's hypothesis, Earth's continents were once joined in a single landmass and gradually moved, or drifted, apart. For many years, people did not accept Wegener's ideas. Not until the mid-1900s did scientists find new evidence that made them consider continental drift more seriously. Yeah, boy! <laughs> Thank you.
For Wegener, all the evidence pointed to a single conclusion. The continents had once been joined in a huge supercontinent he called, Pangaea. Pangaea comes from the Greek word meaning all lands. This giant continent reached from pole to pole and was centered over the area where Africa lies today. Pangaea began to split apart some 200 million years ago. In time, the continents moved to where they are today. Yet Wegener could not explain how the continents moved. Because of this, his critics called continental drift a fairy tale and rejected his hypothesis. The theory of plate tectonics explains how plates and their continents move. For many years, Wegener's ideas were pushed aside. Then in the MID1900S, scientists proved that tectonic plates move. They also offered explanations about how the plates move. Their work eventually led to the theory of plate tectonics, which built on some of Wegener's ideas.